In this video, I want to show you how you can use the gauge visual in Power BI to visualize your KPIs and track its progress. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fenan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the gauge visual is one of my go-to visuals. If I want to show a single value, like a KPI, and highlight its progress, it's a great visual because it allows you to quickly visualize the value of your data how it's progressed towards a target, and it can even act as a KPI by itself. So I wanna show you how you can quickly and easily use it for yourself. So firstly, the gauge visual is a default visual, which you will find in the visualizations pane here on the right. And when you click on it, it will simply add that visual into your report page. You will see that with the gauge visual on the right hand side here in the format pane, it will ask you for a few values in these wells. However, at the minimum, you will just simply need the value well filled in for the gauge to show up. And to that in mind, I created a simple table here, a sample table with a few values in the different columns. So we have the max, min, target, and value. And these are just numbers that I put on a table like this. And I just want to show you how you can visualize this on a gauge visual. So let's go back to our gauge visual here and let's simply drag the value into our value well. So you will see that it will create a visual. It will put the value in the value column here as the callouts. And then the progress, because you haven't set any targets, minimums or maximums, you just simply visualized it and the maximum is kind of doubled of your value just to show the chart itself. Now, because we've predefined all the other values that we are using in this gauge, we can just simply drag them to the correct wells. So for example, let's fix that uh, max. So we'll just change that max and drag it to our maximum value here. So that changes the maximum value to 5,000, same as in our table here. We can also drag the target on the target value well that will add a line within our gauge showing how far or what is the progress of our value towards our target. You can even modify the minimum value. So instead of going to zero by default, you can set a minimum for that. So we can change that to a thousand and that will change the gauge accordingly. So as I mentioned before, the only value that is mandatory in these wells is the value well. Everything else is, and you're able to modify these manually from the format pane. So to show you what I mean, I'm just gonna delete or remove all the other values here. Let's go to the format pane. Under the gauge axis, you will see that in here, you're able to manually input what the values for these remaining um, columns should be. So maximum, we said it was 5,000 and the target was 3,000. And you're able to manage those and add manually. You can input your values manually or you can set them dynamically using the conditional formatting buttons right next to each of these settings. Beyond that, there are a few things that you can customize like font colors or bar colors or customize the fonts even. And what's great is that a lot of these properties you can also use and control dynamically using conditional formatting, which I'll show you in a little bit. So how would this gauge visual be used in a real life scenario? So let's have a look at this model that I built in this report. So here in the model view, you'll see that we have a few different tables here, which is the tables that we have for the Northwind database. This is a database for a fictional company selling products internationally. And you'll see that in our different tables, we have the calendar table for our time intelligence. We have a table for our customers, table for our orders, the how much were ordered and how much the products were. 
the orders and when they were ordered and then the product names uh, what were what were the products that were ordered so with that database if we go back to the report view I've also created a measure here total sales which is simply just calculating the total sales by multiplying the unit price to the quantity giving us the monetary value of those sales now I want to go to a new page and just I want to just try to start visualizing this first. I'm going to put the total car, total sales in a card here. And then I will put the year in a filter visual here. We'll just make it into a list for now. And there's a lot of years here, but we actually just want the years where we have sales. So I'm just going to add a filter here saying just give me any year that is not blank should just give us 1996 to 1998. So now if we select a year, we'll just filter the total sales card that we have, 1998, 1996. So let's say we have a scenario where we now want to visualize how my sales in a specific year is compared to the previous year. So for this purposes, we can use the gauge visual. So before we start creating the gauge visual, let's first create a new measure to get our previous year sales. And this one is actually pretty simple. So we're gonna start by creating a new measure. I'm just gonna name it total sales PY, which is previous year. And then within the calculate function, we're gonna evaluate total sales. And then for the filter function, we're going to use previous year and this will just give it the date from our calendar table. Now, whenever this is evaluated and we filter the year in this uh, filter visual, it will simply just give us the prior year total sales. So if we add this now to our report page here, put it in a card and you will see the difference uh, and what happens when we select, let's say 1997, we have a measure that gets the total sales for that year. And then we have a measure that gets the total sales for previous year, which is 226,000. If you go here, that would verify that is correct. So now that we've done that, let's now put both of these values into a gauge visual. So let's bring in the gauge here. For the value, we need to put the total sales. And then for the targets, we want to set as our previous year total sales, which would be in the target well here. So now you'll notice that we have the target and the total sales in the gauge. So it will show us that, for example, for 1997, we've surpassed the sales that we made in 1996 previous year. We go to 1998, we didn't get there, unfortunately. Now that you can see the progress of your data in a gauge visual let's start by customizing its colors so under format your visual uh, i want to change the fill color to a sort of like a rag status similar to a kpi where if we have or we haven't reached the current target it would be let's say an amber color and if it does reach the target it would be filled with green now you can set that manually here by selecting the colors here in the, the the color list here however that's static and it doesn't really account for the change in context if you select a different year for example it will just stay to the color that you set it however fortunately for us we can use conditional formatting here and define the color based on certain rules that we set or what I like doing is to create measures to kind of fine tune and have a bit more control over what the colors and what the rules should be. So first let's create a new measure once more. We're going to name this one gauge color. And then we're going to type a switch statement, which is simply just uh, an easier way to deal with if statements. So we're going to type expression is true. And then we want to say if the total sales is greater than or equals to the previous year sales, then this, this color should be orange. Otherwise, it should be 
green. Well, now that should be the opposite way around. But if we want to say if the total sales have surpassed the previous year total sales, it should be green. So now we simply use this as the uh, conditional formatting rule for our fill color here. So if we just simply go here, conditional formatting, we change the format style to from gradient into field value. And then we select what field it should be based on. It should be based on the gauge color. And there you go. So you have the fill color changing to amber to orange because we haven't reached the target there. And then if you select 1997, for example, it will show us green because we have surpassed it. Now, because this measure simply outputs the color name, we can also reuse it on other parts of our gauge visual. So for example, I want to modify this callout value to also change its color its font color based on the status of the gauge itself. So we can do that simply by going back to the format visual under callout value, select the conditional formatting option, field value, then select the gauge color that we created. Hit OK. So that will now change similar to how this gauge field color changes when you select different values. There we go. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to start using the gauge visual in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.